so welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we are, well, we, I'm on my own. Uh, we're just doing a brief, um, kind of an update or a follow-up video to the review that we put out of The British Way from GMT Games. So, um, we played The British Way, uh, we played a couple of scenarios out of that. I think we shot the review because we played Palestine, which is the first of the four games contained in this box. It's a quad pack. Uh, of, it's a more multi-pack. Coin multi-pack is what they call it. Um, so we shot the review. You should go and watch that. If you don't know anything about the British way, go and watch that video. Um, that will give you how to play the game, a good intro about it. Oh gosh, I'm pretty sure I showed you how to play the game. Uh, it's some of the differences, where it sits in this coin family, what the game's trying to do. Um, but it's basically right up our alley, because we play lots of coin, we're coin heads, and uh, it, it sits really well with what it's trying to do. Uh, but I have subsequently played everything that's in this box. Uh, Grant hasn't. Partly that's, we've played some of it together, uh, more than, we've pl that we, than we had done when we shot that review. But uh, I've had an opportunity, I played some at WBC whilst he wasn't well, and I have a, a local friend, and he came around and I played the last scenario with him very recently, uh, which is the Cyprus scenario. And so I just wanted to put out a brief update about the British way, because uh, it's fair to say <laughs> that it's hard for us at the Players Aid to revisit games. Um, we, do, we play a lot of different games, um, and hopefully that is a service to the hobby. Um, but it is more difficult for us to kind of go back to games again and again and again, just because our timetable, our schedule, doesn't allow for that as much as we would like. The reality is, is we would love to sit here and play these games over and over and over again as much as we possibly can, but there's so many new games coming out, or there's so many games that we haven't played from the back catalog of Wargaming, because it's been around for much longer than we have, uh, that it, it's difficult to do. All that to, to be said that this is just an opportunity to kind of sit down and to look back on what this box has in it, and a, a slightly more complete picture having experienced everything and being able to say with more surety what the British way is, what it can be for you, and what I think about it. And the reality is, is we'll start right there, my thoughts about this box and this game have not changed at all. Um, I think it is a stunning product, I think it is exactly what it sets out to be. And so the question is, is what does it try to set out to be? So the British Way is the first multi-pack coin game. If you buy this, there are four different kind of mini coin games in it. Uh, there is Palestine, Malaya, Kenya, and Cyprus. And it's counterinsurgency at the end of the empire, the British Empire. Uh, and so it's these four different small scenarios. Uh, and you can play as a campaign. There's a campaign system in here. Uh, to track those, you know, the knock-on effects of, of those things with each other within the broader scope of the political impacts of the Empire kind of uh, dissolving, so to speak. So th that's kind of what you get. Um, one of the big differences with the, the British way over a lot of the other coin games is that it is two-player and it's two-player only. Um, we've had Colonial Twilight, uh, which is another two-player coin game. Um, that is a big game, it is a, you know, it's a three, four hour long game, and it's quite deep and it's quite intense. Uh, the British way, these games are designed to be much more approachable, much faster paced, and play in a shorter period of time, and be very introductory friendly as a result. Uh, so, a single game of this, so if you just say, I want to just play Kenya, you are going to set that up. And if you have played any coin games before, you will play it in about 60 minutes or less. Um, you will play through an 18 card deck, plus three propaganda cards, so it's 21 cards total, but it's 18 cards of actions. So you will take 18 actions, right? That, it, that, it, that is 
crazily short. I think the, the only other shorter games that are like that, I think um, People Power has a very short version, but before that, like, I think the shortest one was something like um, Cuba Libre, which the short scenario is like 48 cards. So e these games are very short. As a result, they're very tense because you do not have the luxury of m kind of messing stuff up. And then I've got 62 cards to recover from that. Uh, you don't have that luxury in these games. So they're very tight. They're much smaller format. The maps aren't very big. They're two player only, so you don't have to worry so much about kind of interfactional rivalries and things like that. Uh, and you also have a low peace density. Like most of the games, the British forces will have like 12 troops and six police. And that might sound like a lot, but it's really not. You're going to have like two or three in a few of the spaces on the board, and that's about it. Uh, so, all of that to say, uh, that it's, it's trying to be this kind of really great small format coin game uh, that's very intro friendly. And, and like I said, it ticks all those boxes. It does everything that it's trying to do extremely well. Um, the scenarios themselves, there's, I'm going to say there's kind of, they're divided into two little camps. In the first camp, you have Palestine and Cyprus. And in the second camp, you have um, Malaya and Kenya. Uh, Palestine and Cyprus are even more stripped down and streamlined. They're, um, it's much more of just like an area control uh, and, a, and a dudes on a map style game. You still have to sabotage and you have to clean those up. You could put out curfews and do some fun little coin bits and pieces with uncovering guys and smoking them out and attacking them, arresting people, interrogating them in prison to get intel. They still got these nice little bits and pieces to them. Um, but you don't have, which you do have in the Malaya in Kenya, this extra layer. So most coin games will have a layer of like Physical control, like a dudes on a map game, where it's just, I've got more pieces than you, I control the area. But then they also have this extra layer of hearts and minds. So you might control the area physically with your military boots on the ground presence, but the people resist you. And so there's also a spectrum of um, oppositional support. Now, Malaya and Kenya have that. They have a, it's either loyalty or oppose in one of them and opposition and support in the other. And so... Uh, those are a bit more um, reminiscent of what the rest of the coin series are like. And I would say that I think I did prefer Malaya and Kenya over the other two. That doesn't mean that they're not good. Uh, it's just I'm not a beginner. I'm not that new. So I do like that extra little bit of meat that's in there. It makes it a bit more complex with your decision making. Even though, again, it's still only 18 cards and you just kind of got to do it. Um, so you, you have, even within the game, you have a variety of different levels. Like, the first game you should play chronologically is Palestine. And that is this really nice, easy format. And then you step it up to Malaya. Then you go to Kenya. And then you take a step down again uh, into Cyprus. Uh, so, again, that level of variety means you can start with whichever one you want. Uh, if you're comfortable with kind of diving on in, Malaya and Kenya are fantastic scenarios, but if, you, if you've if you never played a coin before at all, and it's like, I, I just got to learn this kind of new menu of actions, Palestine, Cyprus, either one are going to be great, and you're going to follow those through, and then you'll be able to build on top of that with the other two types of scenarios. Uh, so that, again, I really, really like what that does, and if you played with anyone who's played a coin before, and even if you've not, you will not play this for longer than 90 minutes. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to do that. Uh, you're gonna play it for 60 minutes at most. Uh, you can auto win in all of these scenarios and if you can get it to auto win, it, it's, it's, you know, a third shorter or two thirds shorter. It has to be uh, based on those conditions. And so it successfully does what it's trying to do, but on top of that, it's just fun. It is still a very enjoyable game experience. I love what we're doing. And I've played this game with three different people. And it, each one of those was 
exciting and it was fun. Uh, one of them was a relative coin newbie. One of them just hadn't played this one before, but had played lots of other coins. And Grant and I have played, and we played, uh, we're very experienced and played everything. And so I've played with a variety of different levels of players, and that was interesting to see about like who picked up what, being able to see the aha moments in other players who haven't played this one before. I always really enjoy that because it's like, I love this game system, and as much as I can tell you, hey, you should not do this, <laughs> or remember, you can always do this thing over here. Um, I can intellectually tell someone that, uh, but until they do it or don't do it and see the consequences, they won't, you know, you can't, you have to kind of learn through your own experience in a lot of war games. Um, and, and seeing some of those things happen, and they're like, oh, I did this, and it gave me this, which enabled me to do this. That was awesome. Or like, oh, I didn't do this. And like, you scored a bunch of points. Oh, no. Like, watching those moments happen, and, and, then, and then thinking through those, I'm like, ooh, if only I had done this. Or, oh, I can do this to rectify that. And you start getting into the strategies of the game and, and trying to think about how the mechanisms interact and what they're representing historically. Then you get into the real juice, the real meat of the game, and it's so fun. Uh, but again, in such a small package. Um, the last thing that I just wanted to talk about is the campaign system in this. I think uh, I'm still getting comments and things that people who maybe don't appreciate or don't know that there is a campaign system in here. And the campaign system is a very simple uh, linking mechanism between the four different scenarios. And you have this little map and you kind of set it up, uh, but really the most important part of it all is that you as the British have to set your posture for the campaign. Uh, and you will either be dead set on net not letting any of your territories go and keeping the empire together, or you will be very um, passive about it and you're happy to let things go independently and peacefully, or there's kind of a middle ground between those two. And what that means is, is that if you go super duper hard, if you win those scenarios as the British, you get a lot of victory points because they didn't leave the empire. But if you lose, <laughs> it's very bad and you lose a lot of victory points. Whereas if you're very hands off, you don't gain as many victory points for winning, but you also don't lose as many for losing. And then there's a middle ground as well. Uh, but uh, So you have that, and you can't change that posture. <laughs> so it kind of sets the tone for how you're trying to approach each of these scenarios throughout the game. But then you also have these um, little uh, event cards for the campaign, and there's late, war, uh, late ones and early ones. Yeah, early ones and late ones say those backwards, and those will ch change the setup a little bit. Or they might say, if this thing happens, um, you, you lose some troops from here, but they're going to show up in the Malaya game because you took them from this theater to commit to that one. So you take a penalty in one scenario to get a bonus in another, things like that, and all of these decisions that you have to make. But it's just a little small deck of cards and just a little sheet where you track uh, everything on it. It is not a. Co it doesn't add any real complexity to the game, but it gives you a sense that these scenarios did not happen in isolation. And I think that to me is the real joy of this game: is that you can play the scenarios individually. They're really fun. They're really good. They stand alone. You can play it over lunchtime. It's wonderful. But being able to kind of stitch them together and see just, you know, and it's not massive, but some of these little knock-on effects or how they interact with each other through a campaign just gives you a much more, um, a much broader narrative of the overall kind of geopolitical situation that I think is really, really good. Uh, I, and I'm very, very excited and looking forward to Multipack 2, uh, which is coming out hopefully next year, uh, but it might, might be, it might be later than that. Uh, but that's, that's all set in South, Central and South America. It might just be, I don't remember exactly, but uh, I think that's called like something, oh, I don't remember. 
something generation soldier generate soldier generation or something I, I don't know what it's called but it looks really cool and i'm very excited for that too because this was such a, a very well developed and extremely well put together product i can't sing the praises of this highly enough uh so especially as an entry point into both coin games and into wargaming as a broader hobby as well. Like, you could do a lot worse than this. This is the kind of game that I would see on a lot of people's shelves who might not be wargamers, because the reality is, is you could sell this as a dudes on a map game and everyone would love it. Uh, now, there's this historical theme on it, uh, and that's also of interest to some people and maybe less interesting to others who are like into sci-fi fantasy or other, you know, mythical dudes on a map style games, but this is the kind of game that could fit into a lot of different collections, not just Wargamers, is what I'm trying to say. So, hopefully that was kind of worth sitting down and listening to, uh, but if you haven't played this, please go out and buy this and support this. Or if you don't necessarily like the theme of this, look on GMT's P500 uh, for, their, for their upcoming new multi-pack, because that's a bit more... Thematically speaking, I feel like that's more like some of those original coin games where it's like Andy and Abyss and Cuba Libre, you get that slightly more, I don't want to say modern, but you get that different flavor to it. Uh, I think that theme will also appeal to people as well, uh, just because it's something that's a little bit different. Uh, but uh, it, this is a, an excellent product um, it's no more or less than a lot of the other coin games. And what I mean by that is, is if you set up something like Andy and Abyss, you're going to play that for four hours. If you to set up all four of these scenarios, you'll play it for four hours. So it, it might sound like it's a quad pack, and technically it is, but you're playing four separate scenarios, but it's the same, same amount of game as, as, as the other coin games in reality. Uh, but you can much more easily and much more satisfyingly break it up into these bite-sized pieces and the bite-sized pieces stand alone really, really well. So, like I said, check this out, uh, but hopefully this kind of an update uh, was helpful for people as kind of a follow-up to our review that we did. Um, who knows? We might play this more and you might see more of this on our channel at some point as well. Uh, just because it's that good, uh, and I know Grant wants to keep playing more of it as well, as do I. This is one of those games that will never leave my collection. There's no need for it to. I really like it, and it fits an excellent niche as well. So thank you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersage.com.